tonight we have Barry Nussbaum from the American Truth Project, and he's going to be talking about the caravan, um, violence in the Middle East. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit about his show. Barry, welcome back to America Trends. Uh, it's great to be back with you, Amy. I hope you had a nice weekend. I sure did. I'm glad you did. I bet you did from where you live. You've got that great weather year round. Um, so remind us a little bit about what the American Truth Project is and how people can catch your show, first of all. Uh, American Truth Project is a uh, nonprofit. We work to educate America on threats to our country, both foreign and domestic, uh, largely relating to terrorism. Uh, and uh, we work to encourage a stronger, continuing relationship with our strongest ally in the world, and that is the state of Israel, the front line of defense against Islamic terror, as um, the Israelis seem to put up with every week. Yeah, what's going on over there right now? We've had some incredible violence and some other, some good news from Netanyahu, though. Yeah, it was announced uh, early today, U.S. time, that Netanyahu was able to save his coalition. Uh, they have a parliamentary system, Amy, unlike our uh, system in the United States. They modeled theirs after Great Britain. So, in other words, the party that uh, gets the most votes in the uh, parliament, or the Knesset, as they call it in Israel, gets to form a government under the permission of the president. So whoever can cobble together a bunch of different parties, of which there's probably a dozen in Israel, and end up with a majority, which is 61 seats, gets to form the government, and the leader of that coalition is the prime minister. For a very long time has been Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, as we all know, in the United States, and obviously in Israel, uh, over the last several weeks, there have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rockets fired into Israel from southern uh, parts of, of the border with uh, Gaza. Uh, they've hit houses all over and um, schools and factories and buses and so on all over southern Israel. And the people of Israel were demanding a very strong military response, some demonstrating to cross the border into Gaza and take the terrorists out. Netanyahu didn't do it. Uh, instead, he made a truce with Hamas, which has held for all of about three days so far. Yeah. And as a result, uh, members of his coalition have left, and he is literally down to 61 seats, and 61 is the minimum to form a government. So if one more person leaves his government, uh, there will be early elections. And it was announced this morning that uh, two of his ministers have decided to stay, at least for now, and we'll see what happens. I'm told from Israel this morning that if Hamas starts firing rockets again, it's all over. Israel's going to open the fence and send the tanks in. And mm -hmm. honestly, it's long overdue. And not unexpected. What did you think when you first heard about this truce? Very controversial over there. I, it's, I, there must be international pressure being put on Israel that we don't know about, Amy. It makes no sense. I mean, imagine uh, you're in San Diego in the studio, and missiles started flying across the border uh, from Tijuana uh, because terrorists had 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 rockets that they were firing from schools, from churches, from hospitals, and the American Army did nothing. And everybody in southern San Diego County was living in bomb shelters 24-7. The outcry would be stupendous, and the United States would eventually go in and wipe everybody out. They sure as heck wouldn't negotiate. And they sure as heck wouldn't say, please don't fire any more missiles at us to terrorize our citizens because it's really not nice. We would appreciate it if you stopped. <laughs> Ironically, not only did Israel do very little other than blow up a bunch of empty buildings in retaliation, get this, on Friday, just a couple days ago, the United Nations uh, in the General Assembly, Assembly introduced nine bills, nine bills. Mm. And they considered all the terror around the world, all the repressive regimes around the world, the dictatorships that have no human rights, that slaughter people without trials, that imprison journalists like North Korea, like uh, the Sudan, like the Russia, and so on. For the whole world, they introduced zero condemnation resolutions, and against Israel, nine on Friday, mm. and nobody in the United Nations, get this, mentioned the missiles, 500 of which flew into southern Israel last week. So no condemnation of Hamas or the terror, only condemnation of Israel, 
with these nonsensical resolutions and nothing about the rest of the world. Is it any wonder most Americans who are informed say, enough's enough, stop paying for the United Nations. It's a kangaroo court. And I would call it that, but that would be racist and an insult to kangaroos. For sure. Well, we'll see what happens next over there. Glad we have you to keep us updated, too. And you know, I know you've got a lot of sources over there. And speaking of San Diego, which you just did, that, that caravan of, of thousands of people, some of them, hundreds at least, have reached the border, have reached Tijuana. And they are, uh, the, the Tijuanans, the Mexicans, are upset. They spent several days protesting. Um, and they said they don't want illegal immigrants there. So uh, we still have more people on the way. Another uh, caravan in, in El Salvador began forming yesterday. What are your thoughts on this? I have a friend uh, who's a um, very uh, creative filmmaker named Ami Horowitz that actually went down and embedded himself into the caravan for a number of days with a crew of like five people and came away with an astounding story that every morning they wake up on the caravan and money is passed out to everybody. Uh, there's food passed out to everybody. There's medical supplies. They're living in uh, tents. They have water. They have transportation. Amy, somebody is spending tens of millions of dollars to move these people from Central America up to the border and then demand that they have a right to enter the United States, which is completely fictitious. And quite frankly, it's a lie. Um, people that come to the United States, if they present themselves at an established port of entry, can claim asylum and go through the process and wait for a very long period to see whether or not it's granted. And sometimes they are, and most of the times they're not. But this is like 10,000 people showing up demanding the right to come into the United States.